Hi, we're Stu and Laura. After moving aboard our 36-foot sailboat Delfino, we spent the summer cruising the west coast of Scotland. We've been pretty remote for the last few weeks, exploring islands, doing some boat work, and trying some of Scotland's super fresh seafood. But it's now been almost two weeks since we went to a supermarket, so it's time to head into town and stock up. We've come to the marina on the island of Kerrera, opposite Oban, one of the largest towns in the Scottish Highlands and Scotland's largest ferry port. Because of that, it's one of the few places that we could guarantee we'd visit this summer. So it was the town I'd done the most research on before we got here and we were super excited to check it out. Although our two remote weeks were lovely, we couldn't wait to get into town. So as soon as we tied up the lines, we jumped on the ferry to head over to Oban. First stop was a chippy for some deep fried haggis and chips. Enjoying your fish and chips, Laura? Really hot. Really hot. Really good. Oh, yeah. Oh, lost Can it. Get away. Oh, she managed. This is British seaside experience. I didn't find that, Laura. Good, eh? Yeah. How would you rate the um, chips themselves? Um, 8 out of 10, and they're very tasty, but they could be a bit crispier. Yeah, I would agree with that. What about the haggis? I'd also say 9 out of 10. Yeah, I think that I would go 9 out of 10 almost. Yeah. Yeah, I thought the filling was really lovely, and the spice and the batter was just an amazing depth of flavour. Really good. You need to my own hair though. You are going to have to tell all the people at home what well, you just referred to the Great British Chippy as. I'd like one fishy gypsy, please. Just one. Oh. So, we are walking up to the monument to McCraig's Tower at the top of Oban. And Stuart, it's only a 10 minute walk, it'll be fine. Like Immediate, like 30. 45 degree incline. More like 30 degrees. <laughs> The tower was commissioned in 1897 by John McCaig, who wanted to create a lasting monument to the McCaig family. But he died before it was completed, and the rest of his family halted construction, so only the outside walls were ever built. So maybe not quite the family memorial he had planned. But now it sits over Oban, a good reason to walk up the hill and get a great view of the sea over to Kerrera and beyond. Who's thinking about it? No? Wimped out. After being remote for a while, Oban was a bit of a shock to the system. It was busy and full of tourists, which makes sense being a big ferry terminal, but made us remember why we came to Scotland. We were here to be remote, go for some great hikes, and find amazing local produce. Luckily for us, the island of Kerrera delivered on all of this. Cows in the gate, cows in the gate. We are doing a little walking tour of Kerrera. We've just passed through the Arden Travy where there's keeping a cute little farm shop and we are on our way to the Ballymore farm which also has a shop and we're going to do a little bit of a loop around the island. We're hoping to buy some uh, Highland Koo. We've seen some very close up so let's see if we can find some that's ready to eat. Kerrera is about four miles long so our plan was to walk to the castle and back via the tea room and maybe a farm shop on the way. Past. 
hungry. Tea room. After a quick lunch stop, we were ready to explore Guyland Castle, which, as we learned from Wikipedia on the way, has some pretty interesting history. So the castle that we can see now was originally four storeys tall and built by the McDougals. The brooch of lawn was stolen from here, supposedly taken from Robert the Bruce, who was King of Scots from 1306 to his death in 1329, and one of the most renowned warriors of his generation. He eventually led Scotland during the First War of Scottish Independence against England. What a badass. Oh, it's basically Braveheart. He's, yeah, I think he is. I think that's what Braveheart's based on. So, you know, I've never watched Braveheart. I've never watched yeah. Braveheart. Fictions oh. in modern culture. Films, Braveheart. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, then. Yeah. It's Braveheart! Braveheart, yeah. Braveheart's brooch! And he's also the, the Scottish king in Super 6. Oh, God, we've got to watch it. Yeah, we've got to watch it. I'd researched all the things to do in Oban, and I knew you could walk around the island of Kerrera, but until we sailed past this castle, I had no idea it was here. And it turned out to be our favourite part of these few days. It's the little discoveries that really make the cruising lifestyle worth it. Travelling slowly gives you an opportunity to find a hidden gem that those researching a week trip to the highlands would gloss over. We found Kerrera to be beautiful and varied, with a remote rural feel and amazing views to the west. It was exactly what we came here for. Look at the size of that thing. Cool. That is cool. Farm shop number two. What's in there, Laura? So, low, it's basically loads of different bits of cow. So. All different types of steak, ham made out of beef, sausages made of beef, some mints, all sorts of goodies. I might just have a dive underneath as well. Talk us, talk us through what steak you chose. Honesty box beef buying hacks. So my thought process for what we've just done, we'll see if this pans out when I actually cook it, but there was lots of sort of actual steak cuts of meat. So sirloin steaks, ribeyes and rump steaks, but they'd all been frozen for six months. So, and typically I find once, once beef has been frozen, the texture of it changes slightly because as it's frozen, the, the molecules I think expand and that pushes all the water out of them. So the beef will typically be tougher once it's been frozen and defrosted. So with that in mind, oh, get through a puddle. So with that in mind, I didn't want to buy any of the steaks that are designed for just frying and eating as steaks. So I wanted something more that I could either stew or like marinade. So we've gone for some skirt steak, potentially at the moment thinking that I'm gonna marinate it and make like steak burrito bowls. Nah. We're in Scotland after all. It's <laughs> raining and the path is totally flooded. Good, good. Perfect. <sighs> Have you found the walk? Yeah, it's been good. Um, mostly had great weather, good views. Had a farm shop and some cake in a castle. I can't complain. A little bit of rain. It wouldn't be a walk in Scotland if it, we didn't have any, really. Exactly, and a little bit of fog. A little bit of bog, yeah. Yeah, looking forward to getting back into the warm now, though. But yeah, yeah it's been really, really good. It's been awesome.
So this is the skirt steak that we bought yesterday from the Ballymore farm. Um, I've marinated it with some oil, some lime juice, some garlic, some Mexican chilli powder, some fajita seasoning and probably some other little bits and pieces that I'm forgetting about. And I am now going to fry it off and it's going to become part of some burrito bowls for dinner. By poking them, you can sort of tell how firm they are. In the way that I learnt to cook steak was it should feel like this bit of your hand. So that's the most rare steak, that's a medium and that's a well done. So you can feel tense, less tense, more rare. At the moment these feel rare. Okay. They're very spicy. Very spicy and sneezing. Maybe I went a bit heavy handed with the chilli powder. Ta-da! Yeah. <laughs> Yum. Pretty good. Pretty tasty. Nice. Pretty spicy. Yeah, the red sauce that I made is very spicy. Going in deeper. Ooh, feeling brave. Yeah, it's good dumb. Very good. Dumpster diving. Go on, find uh, So we're, we're trying to watch a film and we wanted some specific snacks that we bought today. We also bought 30 packets of crisps today and Stuart shoved them all and, uh, into the cupboard not just individually. The crisps, all like, of the <laughs> other things. There's a million items in there. Now trying to find one specific thing that's in this cupboard is like the worst thing ever. Go on, Laura. Go find the cheese twists. Meat tortilla chips. Yay! Oh, you found them. Thanks for watching. Next time we leave Oban and head up the Sound of Mull to Tobermory home of a sustainable dairy farm that produces the best cheddar we've ever had.